Good evening, everybody. Come on, let's uh, wait a little bit for people to come in and um, see who is going to be joining. And uh, it's a great day. Don't you think, guys? It's very hot. That's the way I like it. I tell my little corn in heaven will be just like that. Not humid, but just hot. Um, guys, as people begin to join, a couple things. Um, just I wanted to uh, let you know. Uh, one of the exciting things that uh, we did, uh, that we are doing, uh, is baptismals. And so uh, we did the one last week. We're going to be doing the one uh, this week. And uh, so it's going to be fantastic, All right? So tomorrow, uh, 6 o'clock, if you wanted to join via YouTube uh, or Facebook, you can. We're going to stream live baptismal for Maria and Hugo. It's going to be fantastic. Last weekend, last Friday, we did another one. And I think, believe the next Friday, we have another baptism. So three Fridays on a row here, we're going to have a baptism. And then we're very excited about our prayer meeting last night. We had just about 40, 42 people, I think, that showed up for uh, Bible, um, for our prayer meeting. And we did it through uh, YouTube as well. So it was amazing for us to be together. And of course, the protocol for that, folks, is the same, okay, uh, as Sunday. So you register and then you come, we'll seat you. And it was just fantastic. And then we are keeping that distance that uh, we need to. And uh, you're comfortable with, uh, you know, coming, please. Uh, make sure that you do, or if you want to join us through YouTube, you also can. Our Sunday service have been tremendous, just amazing for us to come together and worship the Lord together. And the uh, people that came so far are absolutely enjoying. And so I want to um, just, uh, you know, uh, motivate you to to just be a part and, and not to be, even if you are doing from home, make sure that you worship, make sure that you, you know, lift up your hands, make sure that you enter in. And I know it's hard because, you know, our family did for, uh, you know, all those months there and it is hard, but you know what? I just felt, hey, I'm going to just be do this just like as if I was in church. And uh, so I'm a worshiper. And so it doesn't matter where I am. I'm going to worship the Lord. You know, fight the comfort. It's very easy, folks. And this is a pastoral word for you. It is very easy for you to come to the place of comfort. Out of the sudden, you begin to rationalize things. Ah, you know, I don't really need to come to church. I don't really need to. It's, you know, a home is much more. And out of the sudden, and, and you know, and, and it's true. I mean, you know, salvation is not... Uh, based on coming to church or not coming to church. But I tell you, there is the whole aspect of fellowship and the whole aspect of us coming and worshiping together. The gathering of the people together is very, very important. So I want to just motivate you to engage yourself, even if you're at home with your family, make sure we're going to have communion pretty soon. And so, you know, engage, worship. When it comes to the time to pray, pray. You know, be consistent on your... Uh, you know, on your uh, service, like, you know, many people, oh, I will just watch during the week and out of the sudden you lose the discipline. Folks, don't do that. All right. If you'd come before the COVID on a 930 service, keep on watching on 930. If you it would be on the 11 o'clock on the second service, 1130 now, you know, just continue on the 1130. Just make that time a time where I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to just minister to the Lord. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now, thank you guys for everybody joining in. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to turn off the comments or the chat for me, okay? So I'll not be able to see, but you guys keep on commenting, you know, say hello to everybody just like it's happening and, uh, you know, making sure that, um, you know, even though particularly if you haven't seen each other and you see them joining on chat, even on Sunday, make sure that you just write something there, write a word of encouragement to, um, you know, to the office, to the people here that are working very hard hard to make sure that uh, you know you have that live streaming well and uh, so I think it's a time I'm gonna turn off here my comments and then um, we are gonna jump into the word today last week Pastor Valjean Alessandra did an amazing job uh, talking about you know choosing 
you know what is your choice and uh, i'm gonna uh talking about faith and i'm gonna start today by saying choose to walk by faith choose to walk by faith you know we are living in a time of great challenges i mean our faith has been challenged you know it requires great faith to do life these days it requires faith for you to come out of your house these days can you say amen to that see faith is something that should be increasing daily right it should be increasing daily faith is the key folks that unlocks the blessing of god in our lives you know hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 let me put it on the screen here for you it says this hebrews 11 6 but without faith it is impossible to please god so if you want to please god you do it by walking faith is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him you know if you have your bibles there underline the word rewarder okay he is the one that will reward us as we walk by faith now many people who read the bible and are not saved and you know they can read but they aren't saved they can read but they are not changed because reading alone the bible doesn't do much for you now if you mix your reading with faith then it will do something in your spirit it will do something for you you see uh you gotta add you know faith you gotta mix faith with the reading of God's word. And folks, again, we are living in a time where the word of God must be alive, must be uh, well established in our spirit. And, um, and that we do it by faith, by faith. So I guess a great question then as we talk about choosing faith, well, what is faith? What is faith? Let me see here. What is faith? What is faith? Well, Hebrews chapter 11 verses um 11 verses 1 says this now faith is the substance of things hoped for in the evidence of things not seen faith now faith is the substance of the things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so what is faith what is faith and I believe that this is a great question for us to ask. And um, let me just, based on this scripture, very simply, let me just remind you, or maybe if you're joining, you've never heard about faith, I'll give you the principle of, of faith, uh, what faith is. But, um, you know, it's a reminder for us because sometimes we want to walk by faith, but we don't, um, we don't do it because we um, just... Uh, we, we just forget about what faith is and that we need to be exercising faith, that we need to be walking uh, in faith. So what is faith? So uh, number one, uh, faith then is this. What is faith? Faith operates in the now. Faith operates in the now. Now, remember the verse that we just read. Now faith is. Now faith is. God is not of a God of yesterday. God is not of God of tomorrow. He's a God of today. That's why it says, now faith is. It's a present tense. You see, he lives in the eternal, but it's now. And so when you're talking about faith, it is important for us to understand that faith is not now things, today thing. I live today by faith. I get up by faith. I go out of my house by faith. I go to the superstore by faith. I work by faith. I live by faith. I breathe by faith. See, faith is on the now. It's not something that I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's I'm walking today by faith. The next thing about faith is, is that faith is a faith. Sorry. Faith is a substance. Okay. Faith is a substance. Now notice in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, where it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith is actually a substance. What is that? You know, the actual Greek means that the, for that word, you know, a substance it simply means this it provides the basis for 
So that substance, originally, it means this, provides the basis for something. So faith is a literal, unseen material that you can rely upon and stand upon your life. In other words, even though you don't see it, it is so strong in you. It is just like a matter that you see. It's something that provides a base. I'm standing on. It's not something abstract. It's not something that I just think about it and maybe perhaps. No, no, no. I am founded. I am I'm basing my life upon some principles, some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, the whole uh, uh, life of God himself, the principles of the word himself. I'm basing my life in that. So it is, it's providing the base for even me to be alive, all right? And then the next thing about faith is this, is that faith is also the evidence of things not seen is the evidence of things not seen. So faith is your, like a title deed. It's a title deed. The word translated evidence here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, can also be translated as title deed. Title deed. So faith becomes the proof of your ownership. Faith deals with the unseen realm and has influences operating to produce conviction. So, in other words, as you exercise faith, it's produced such a conviction into your spirit about what you're believing for, that that conviction, which is faith, becomes the title deed for my very life. So, faith deals with the unseen realm that, and has influences operating to produce conviction, which carry the force of demonstration. In other words, something that is... You are so convicted about it, but you now you translate it into your life. So the word often signifies a process of proof of or demonstration. So in other words, it's uh, so uh, embedded in you. It's, you're so living by that conviction that you begin to begin to live your life or begin to act out what you believe. Okay, faith. Then next one, I believe here, folks. Sorry. Next one is, faith is the evidence. And then the next one is, faith is the agency through which all things were created. Faith is the evidence through which all things were created. Now, remember, if you keep on reading the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 3, it goes, it goes to say this, by faith... We understand that the words were framed by the word of the world were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So everything we see is a product of faith few words. Remember, when God was creating, he created with the power of his spoken words. That gives you a clue about your, your you know you proclaiming something, you leaving something, not only an internal belief, but you'll begin to declare that. I declare by faith that I'm protected by God. I declare by faith that God today is helping me to live this day, to go virus free. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you're providing me the faith. I built such a evidence of your actions, of your promises in my life that I'm, 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 I'm living by that conviction and I'm proclaiming that conviction. I believe that you are, I'm sowing seeds of that through uh, verbally about what you are doing in my life. See, words are spiritual seeds, seeds that have the ability to produce material, physical things like plants, animals, and planets, just like God created and he spoke, you can you can also create by the spoken word. Man, I'm creating a, you know, within myself, I'm declaring over myself that, Frank, you know, today it's going to be a joyful day, Frank. Today, praise the Lord. Lord, I'm putting my trust, my faith in my God, who is my joy, who is my strength. I don't have it inside of me, but I have the Lord on inside of me. Hallelujah. And that which is on the inside of me is going to be produced into my life. So I thank you that the healer lives in me today. And I declare that healing over me. I declare that healing over whatever 
wherever I go. I declare that healing over everything around me. Hallelujah. You see, faith is a very, such an important, important thing. Let me just go for the next one here. Uh, letter E, faith and sight are opposed to one another. So faith is sight. So faith and sight are opposed to one another. Uh, verses Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says this, For we walk by faith and not by sight. If you walk by sight, you don't need faith. If you walk by faith, then you don't need sight. See, I'm walking by faith. I'm believing that God is going to protect me. God's going to guard me. That no matter what happens around or coming against me, my God is going to provide for me. He's going to provide that job that I need. He's going to provide the health that I need. He's going to provide everything that I possibly need in the name of Jesus. And I don't need it to see. I don't need it to be looking around. I know in my know. I know I have a base. I have a conviction within my spirit that he is my provider. Hallelujah. You see, those are the things that we need to understand. Even though my eyes cannot yet see the provision of God, I know that my God is going to provide me. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. All right. Let's um, just go here for some hindrances of faith. Some hindrances of faith. Let me see here, guys. I'm not so... Oh, there you go. So, hindrances of faith, okay? So, uh, very important for us to be talking about that because, you know, faith has some hindrances and we need to know which they are. Number one hindrance of faith is, yeah, you guess it, unbelief. Unbelief. Um, James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Faith and unbelief doesn't come together. All right? And the, and the huge hindrance for faith is unbelief. Now, how do you build your belief? You build your belief by hearing, all right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 4, verse 20 says, He did not waver at the promise. Talk about Abraham. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus said this, According to your faith, be unto you. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. See, faith and unbelief cannot coexist together. Belief prevents faith from working in your life. Well, how do you uh, go against or you battle unbelief? By building yourself with the Word of God. The Word of God will produce faith in your life. If you don't have you know, faith for healing, guess what? You need to be hear the word of he about healing, what the Lord has to say, what the Bible has to say, you know, and, and boy, there is so much out there, and uh, people have this blah, blah, blah regarding healing, but I tell you what, I choose to believe that God is my healer, because the word of God says, and so I'm standing on that promise that God is my provider, you know, that he's my provider, he's going to provide for every single need that I have, all right? So make sure, folks, that as you go, particularly through this season that we are right now, make sure that you will build your faith, allowing unbelief to diminish in your life, all right? And then number two, or the second area that we needed to be talking about, also a hindrance of faith is foolishness and selfishness. Um, uh, James chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they, do they not come from your desire for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and you covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you not, do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Foolishness and selfishness. You see, the purpose of prosperity is to accomplish the will of, and the purpose of God 
in your life. See, God wants to position us for blessing. Can you say amen to that? Yes, God wants to position you and I for blessing, but you can't be foolish with the blessing that God gives. You see, being foolish, you see, the Bible says if you're faithful in the small things, we are going, God's going to give you more. But if you're unfaithful, why should the Lord? Or being selfish. And so when we're talking about faith, when we talk about hindrances, we got to drive foolishness right out of our lives and selfishness right out of your lives. You see, so... The, the purpose of the blessing and the purpose for us to enjoy the blessings of God, you know, even according to this passage that I just read there, so is to bless the kingdom of God. Our hearts needs to be to the kingdom of God. Oh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get this virus because if I get this virus, boy, I'm going to be sick. And, um, you know, and boy, if I get this virus and my immune system is not good on my lungs and depends how old I am, boy, I may even not make it. So I don't want to get it. Well, that's okay. It's a valid reason. But how about, how about you say, I'm, I'm not going to get this thing. I tell you why. Because God has a plan for my life. It's because, you know, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to be with Jesus whenever he wants me to be with him. It's not going to be a virus that's going to get me out or drive me in my bed for several days or make me feel this or that. No, no, no. You know, I have work to do. I'm going to live for God every day. It counts for the Lord. I don't want to be sick. I want to walk in divine health because there is a purpose that goes beyond my own life, beyond my own well-being. I have a purpose of God in my life. I have the word of the Lord on inside of me, and I need to project the word. I need to speak the word. Those that work with me, those that go to school with me, those, my neighbors, my family, you know what? I'm going to proclaim the goodness of God. And the reason why I don't want this virus and the reason why I'm not going to, I'm going to stand before God and, and believe every day that he's going to cover me with his blood is because of a greater purpose than only my well-being. Amen. So, and then the next hindrance of faith that we are going to see here. Let me just see here. Sorry, guys. I'm not so savvy as you can see. Um, it's also sin. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. It says, faith doesn't work because sin hinders your ability to receive. Watch this. For whatever is not from faith is sin. What? What do you, what, what, what is it that you, your definition of sin? Think about that. Well, according to Romans chapter 14, 23, whatever doesn't come from faith is sin. I tell you, I'm not going to live in sin. Can you say amen? I'm going to make sure that I'm going to have a declaration for my day. Thank you, Lord, that Frank is blessed today. As I ride my bike to work today, you protect me and you guard me. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that your family, my family, Lord, is well taken care of. I thank you that I'm provided in every way. My family is provided in every way. I thank you for the word of God that lives and reigns in my life today. I thank you for the house of God, OCC. Lord, I speak viva over OCC and viva over families and viva over everyone, Lord. I just believe, Lord, today is a day where your people are going to enjoy the blessing and the prosperity of God. That's how I need to live my life. And that would be my confession on a daily basis. As I wake up and these days with the beautiful weather like it is, you know, I'm just, uh, man, I'm just enjoying my bike ride. And as I come to work, you know, I just, I just declared the word of the Lord. I just declared the word of the Lord. I'm not going to live in sin. Oh, what if happened? What? No, 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 no. I'm going to make sure that I'm proclaiming, I'm living by, I'm standing in faith. And then the last thing that I want to point out to you here regarding hindrance of faith is regarding presumption. Presumption. We act in presumption, not faith hinders us from enjoying what God has for us. Hebrews chapter 11, 29, great scripture. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, where the Egyptians attempting, underline the, that, that word, attempting to do so, were drowned. You see, urged on by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea. Right? Remember the story. They crossed the Red Sea as though on dry land. Remember they said that. They, they crossed the Red Sea as 
as they were in dry land. But watch this, watch this. But the Egyptians tried to do the same thing they did, but were swallowed by the sea. What was that trying to? They try, well, if the, if the, the people of God, if the Israelites passed as, as dry men, we are going to go to and nothing's going to happen to us. Presumption is no good. Presumption is not faith. You see, and many people live on that realm of presumption. I'm, you know, presumpt, you know, I'm going to just, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I'm going to live my life and I'm going to, uh, you know, maybe God perhaps. And because it happened to him or to her, I'm going to do the same thing. No, folks, we get to walk on our own feet. You, it, you see, faith is something that is very personal to you. You walk by faith. I can't. I remember sitting in church one time and a pastor was saying, you know, God doesn't have grandchildren. Boy, that stuck with me because, you know, my dad was serving God. But at that time, I wasn't serving God. I was presuming that the relationship that my dad had with God would also take me to heaven, would also save me. Boy, that was so strong in my life. And you can't live on this realm of presumption. You've got to live in the realm of faith. Now, my prayer is, folks, as we end to the end here, uh, you know, is that you live in the realm of faith, that you choose faith to walk your life. Amen. Um, folks, uh, I'm going to pray with you, and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, remember, if you are ready to come to church, sign up. It's very important for you to sign up. You know, again, we have... You know, we are, I, I believe it's going to be this week here. Don't quote me on that because, you know, these people say one thing, but they, they, don't, they don't fulfill. But uh, we are going to install the air purifier this coming week, I believe. And uh, we already have the fog machine, which is amazing thing. You know, it's, it's just, uh, boy, uh, they, they use that on ICUs. They use that on um, airplanes. And it's just awesome when you do that and before you come here between the services for the next crowd that comes in so we are we're we're, we're walking you know we, we are doing the best we possibly can but the most thing we're walking in faith amen uh so be ready make sure that you sign up okay so let's pray father in the name of jesus i thank you and i praise you for everyone at the sound of my voice watching this right now live or is going to watch this later on Father, I ask that you bless each one. I ask, oh, Father, that, Lord, that we would be pe a people that walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, I give you thanks and I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. Uh, tomorrow, baptismal, 6 p.m. If you want to join us, make sure that you will join us. God bless you, folks. And uh, we uh, love you and uh, very excited to be together again. Next week, Pastor Valdir Alessandro are going to come back and uh, deliver another great word. So God bless you guys.